can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See lights like a beach if you find the same right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Today is no different. I have Dr. Maggie Yu. You can check her out at DrMaggieYu.com. She also has a book, Out of the Box. You can check it out, outofthebox.com. And we'll talk, uh, you know, Dr. Maggie, I'm going to formally introduce you in a second. I always like to mention other podcasts uh, that people should check out, episodes. Um, Dan Cashel. Yeah. Big shout out to Dan Cashel. We met because of Dan Cashel. We did an episode. I think I've done two episodes with them. How to triple your profits and impact with Dan. Uh, Breakthrough 3X. You can check that episode out. Um, since this is part of kind of the health and longevity series, Dr. Maggie, I I, I had um, Wim Hof on the podcast. Um, he talked about happiness, health, and love. And uh, talked. it was crazy. Like the breathing <laughs> techniques. Have you ever... Yeah done experiments with Wim Hof stuff? Yes, yes, and yes. So I have yeah. great friends who also um, worked with him and trained with him as well. He actually wrote the preface of um, um, Shane Sanders' book and their um, breath coaches too. Um, so I am a huge fan of breath work and people who work with amazing people like Hoff. It, it's a really amazing episode. Um, I think it was close to two hours and it was just true Wim Hof style. You could see his right eye because you think he was on an iPhone <laughs> and the video is great. And, um, but I like practiced his methods for like 60 days before mm -hmm. the uh, before the interview, just to be familiar with it. It's, yeah. it's amazing stuff. Uh, also, Kara Golden. Kara Golden uh, is the founder of Hint Water. Yes. Um, and she talks about how different drinks can impact your health. And she was impacted with health. And that's why she actually, one of the impetus of her starting uh, Hint Water. So that yeah. was a great one. My nephew uh, loves Hint Water. And we all, we all, we're always like, kind of like it's an inside joke in our family. And we're like, did you want a hint of this? Or did you want a hint of that? And it's like, just a hint, <laughs> just a hint. Poking fun. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> It's not too sweet, you know, and so it's just a that's hint. what makes it healthy. It's just a hint. <laughs> um, Jim Quick was another one. He talked about learning to memorize anything and yep. speed reading. And so that was a really good one. Kind of like a brain health, mm -hmm. uh, accelerating learning episode. So that and many more on inspiredinsider.com. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Rise25. And at Rise25, uh, we help businesses give to and connect their dream relationships and partnerships. Uh, how do we do that? We do that by helping you run your podcast. We're an easy button for a company to launch and run a podcast. And Dr. Maggie, you knew, you know this. We do the yes. accountability, the strategy, and the full execution. So we're kind of like the magic elves that run in the background and make it look easy for the host. So they create amazing content, create amazing relationships, and most importantly, run their business. Um, you know, for me, the number one thing in my life is relationships. And I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. And I've really found no better way over the past decade to profile the people and companies I most admire and share with the world what they're working on. So if you thought about podcasting, you should. If you have questions, go to well, rise25.com. You were to say something. I want to give you a shout out. Um, thanks to you. You've introduced me to some amazing people and podcasts. And I just got off of uh, the veterinary life. And that's with Julie Capel. And I had so much fun going into I'm a functional medicine doctor. And it's so it was so much fun going into holistic pet health, which is a huge binge love of mine. So thank you to you for introducing me to amazing people like Julie Capel. Awesome. And then you know, Lee Richter, you can, people can check out that episode as well. And she talked about how they built up a huge, um, you know, in the pet space, uh, mm -hmm. hospital, yeah. a veterinary hospital, and then ended up selling it. And that was a cool story. And her and her husband are really big in the yeah. holistic vet space. Um, but I want to formally introduce Dr. Maggie Yu. She is a 28 year functional medicine MD. <laughs> <laughs> uh, best-selling author, uh, the best-selling book I mentioned before, it's titled Eight Out-of-the-Box Ways to Transform Your Health. Um, she loves to tackle 
the unsolvable complex health conditions. Yes. He's a glutton for punishment, in my opinion, because these for are some fun. of the for the hardest ones. We're talking autoimmune diseases, POTS, dysautonomia, mast, mast cell activation, cell. histamine issues, long COVID, hormone issues. I Come can go. Me. I can go on and on. Uh, and you tackle these. And I actually just referred someone to you, yep. um, you know, a couple of weeks ago because when I hear these things, I'm like, just to go go talk to Dr. Maggie on this, and she's really an incredible speaker and educator. And it comes from her own personal journey with this. So she has experienced this stuff actually herself. And that's how it took her down this path. Um, she's a very active social media too. Um, when I, I think when I went to your YouTube, um, you have a podcast as well. There's like over a hundred thousand people, uh, subscribers who watch and listen to your stuff. So thanks for joining me. I'm excited to be here. I can't wait to dig in. <laughs> so just start off a little bit. And I'm gonna, since this is the video, I'm gonna share my screen with your site, but just talk a little bit about what you do. We'll go back to your journey a little bit, but talk about yeah. what you do as a company. What I do as a company is I educate. I am uh I love education. Do you know the root for the word doctor is it's act Latin root is actually teacher. And I feel like I know how far have we come away from doctors as teachers. And part of it is our own training. And so for me, what we do, Transform is my company with Maggie UMD. And what we do is I look at impossible to deal with um, chronic health symptoms that we just went over. But I love to take the model where we take your personalized data, the right data. Number two, education. And then number three, live expert guidance I and to really tackle impossible to solve problems from a root cause level. And I think that out there, there's a lot of whack-a-mole going on. Well, in the conventional world, there's a lot of this pill or the surgery for your problem. And then in the holistic medicine world, there's a lot of whack-a-mole going on with people not really looking at the order of operations or even everything, single thing that needs to happen. Uh, so all those pieces are missing. And so I love to bring order to the madness and expertise and mastery to every single level, um, every le level of the problem. That's what we do. So I work with people with different programs, different types of journeys, working through thyroid disorders, hormonal imbalances, food sensitivity and food trauma issues. And I have programs that combine all these layers um, to deal with impossible to solve problems like chronic autoimmune disease, POTS, dysautonomia, mast cell, you name it, autism spectrum. We got you. Which is the most popular? I'm looking here. Dr. Mm -hmm. Megan, your site. Now you have different types of programs. Mm -hmm. We have the Transform program, the Hormone right. program, mm -hmm. Food Mapping, Thyroid Masterclass. Yeah. Is the Transform kind of the yes, where that's most our people? Flagship. Yeah, talk that's about our, the Transform. The Transform program is our flagship program, and it is my five pillars approach. And it really takes a look at what are some of the major root causes of all autoimmune disease and chronic disease. And they involve things like, you know, for example, blood sugar. <laughs> blood sugar, digestion, nutrient density, hormone balancing, thyroid balancing, and gut health, and all the mindset work and limiting beliefs that we got to blow through to get all these results. So I, I mean, the success stories here, this is just a couple of them. If you, if you do go to my YouTube channel, it's under my name, Dr. Maggie Yu, with hundreds of case studies. So I love to say, I want to look at these impossible to solve problems, no matter what they are. Yes, I've done, dealt with them. In fact, I take those problems. I eat it for breakfast. Please give me some lunch and dinner to feast on. Um, that's how I roll. That's how we roll. That's what we do in this program. You know, you went through this in trial and error with yourself. Yes. Um, what were some of the big mistakes you made on your health journey early on mm. when you were you were going through some of these things? Yeah. What were you experiencing? Um, as a physician, as a woman, as a mother, as a, as someone who started to develop chronic disease, I think one of the biggest mistakes that I made was the limiting belief that I knew or I did everything that I need I had to know on the subject. Uh, I think that's a big problem. Uh, number one, even as a physician, I didn't know it all at all. In fact, I look at the knowledge that I have now and the experience that I have now and the results I have now, I probably knew 1% of what I needed to know. But I was under the, uh, the illusion 
um, or illusion or disillusion, <laughs> the illusion that as a practicing family medicine physician of 10 years that, yeah, I knew how to deal with all these problems and problems that I couldn't deal with. Uh, it must be someone's head and they must need some therapy and some antidepressants or birth control pills. So I think to me, the biggest mistake was making that assumption as a physician and then as someone who later came down with these symptoms um, that had normal labs and receiving that kind of treatment, it, I think, you know, Jeremy, that was probably my greatest shame. What were you experiencing? What were symptoms that you had? Yeah, uh, I had hair loss. I had severe pain all over my body, like fibromyalgia. I had severe, um, <laughs> I started to develop severe brain fog, ADD like symptoms. I felt like I was irritability. I couldn't sleep. Uh, and like random joint pain, like shoulder, wrist, heel, jaw, um, to the point where it was literally torture every single day without a cause. All my labs were normal. My x-rays were normal. Right. And then I hit early menopause at 36, no periods, literally. At the top of my game, supposedly, as a family med medicine physician, I was medical director of one of the largest uh, clinics here in, Portland, here in the Portland area, you know, working for a great medical group. I was ambitious. I was young. I was I loved my job. I was training other family physicians. And then I became sick as I've ever been, you know, and I had no answers. What were they got telling? to the point where I lost my job? Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No, so go ahead. I lost my job. I lost my marriage, you know, and I nearly lost my life. So I, I, it, the result was I had to hit rock bottom. I was just going to ask, um, the labs are coming back normal. What are the doctors? I mean, obviously you're having all these symptoms. Yeah. What were the, what were people telling you at the time? Maggie, you just, you don't need to test your hormones, Maggie. You know, um, if you're not menstruating, then they're normal postmenopausal. And if you are, and if you're menstruating, then your hormones are normal. So you don't need to test it. And then when I literally had to beg my gynecologist, who was a friend and colleague of mine to say, please, please, please test my hormones. Um, it, he came back and my FSH, which is one of the hormones uh, that shows you're in menopause was like in the eighties, which means I was full blown menopause at 36. And the answer to that, and he didn't check the other hormones. Um, the answer to that was you're just getting older. <laughs> Like, we don't know why it's happening, but you're just getting older. It's kind of like, deal with it. <laughs> and this is a colleague even of mine, right? You think maybe I get a little bit of preferential treatment as a doctor, and I got the same shit everyone else got that I doled out. <laughs> and so, you know, talk about that for a second. And then you went on a journey. What did you discover? And we're yeah. looking at, you know, here's obviously... Um, more information if if someone you know has these issues right? right and and everyone we know is going to experience something like this as they age but you're yeah. saying it doesn't have to be normal so you don't have to live everyone with it everyone doesn't experience what many people experience there are many people that go through hormonal changes um rather gracefully um, and that doesn't have to be menopause. It could be postpartum. It could be monthly cycles. It could be puberty. I mean, hormone affect every age, man, woman, or child. And the problem, um, the problem with it is that people don't realize how many things where the hormones are a trigger for other chronic diseases. And it's interesting. It's the rate of hormone change in certain individuals. Uh, I call it hormonally vulnerable times in women more often than in men. But then there are certain individuals with the underlying genetics or environmental factors that causes them to have a rate of hormone change that's bigger. Okay. And that is a triggering event for things like autoimmune disease, right? I didn't realize till years later that at the birth of each of my children, when I, I delivered the baby, but I also delivered a placenta. So when I deliver the placenta, there's a dramatic hormone downturn the moment you deliver the, deliver the placenta. And then I wonder why every time I delivered a child, I lost hair. I got all these symptoms, craziness, right? And it turned out it wasn't years later. And I never had testing while I was postpartum. Years later, I discovered I had an autoimmune disease against my thyroid, Hashimoto's. And it was also quote unquote borderline positive. So they're like, oh, it's not real. It's not really positive. Are you kidding me? 
right? So there were hidden connections between thyroid, autoimmune disease. And here is a secret that nobody else there is talking about because they don't have the experience to say it. If anybody out there has low thyroid, okay, or high thyroid, okay, well, let's just use low thyroid as an example. There are now studies that show that depending on the study, anywhere from 60 to 80% of low thyroid is autoimmune related. So it's not just a thyroid problem. Your immune system is jacked up trying to kill your thyroid, which is a hormone making organ. Now, if your immune system is making a mistake that your thyroid cells, which is hormone making organ, is a germ and it needs to be killed, do you, what do you think it's doing to your ovary hormone making cells, to your adrenal hormone making cells, to your brain? hormone making cells or your pancreas, which makes insulin. These cells all look very similar. So what do you guys think is the likelihood that those other cells are also under autoimmune attack, right? hundred percent. So there's a hidden holy grail here, which is that don't miss the link of autoimmune disease in people with thyroid disorders, but don't miss the link of autoimmune disease in someone who already has an autoimmune disease. What the hell is happening with the rest of the uh, hormones? that are also likely under attack. So there's connections with hormones with clues to windows to so many other systems in the body that are happening. There's a video here, Dr. Maggie says, uh, ending hormonal health. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because women, I mean, women and men going through hormonal health know what I mean when I say health, right? So uh, that speaks to a lot of people because what I went through was hormone, nothing short of hormonal health. And to the point is so bad. I thought I was better off dead. I, I mean, I really did. I mean, I, I mean, Jeremy, I wasn't kidding when I said, you know, between the hormones and the autoimmune disease and the chronic pain as a result of those things. I mean, I was damn near suicidal, you know? So it, it is like torturous to go through this kind of thing. And I'm going to talk about you know, a mindset thing here. What do you think that does to your own personal sense of certainty and confidence about yourself? I lost myself. So this isn't a minor hormonal hell kind of, oh, menopausal woman thing. I think this whole idea around hormonal balance and spiritual and emotional and energetic mindfulness balance is all tied together. At what point, thanks for sharing that. It's like just a debilitating journey if anyone's had any type of pain, small or big, it's just, it restricts and the more pain and issues, it just restricts who people are and their mm -hmm. lifestyle and, and their mood, right? I mean, as, as you know, I, I had practiced and I had patients come in and, and I just told everyone in the office, like if someone's mad or angry, whatever, just don't take it personally. They could just be in pain and they're just taking it out on mm -hmm. us. So, just be aware of that. It's not personal. Um, talk about what, what point do you decide? Okay. Cause you were trained traditionally, right. Mm -hmm. And you're working in regular clinics. You're like, listen, I need to do something different. And you started transform. What was that point where you decide I'm going to, I'm going to start transform, which is a totally different model of practicing what you learned in all the school you went to. For me, how did I transfer from a functional, I had to start my own practice and it was a functional medicine clinic that integrated both medical providers, medical doctors and providers with naturopathic physicians. So that was the biggest uh, functional medicine clinic in Portland, Oregon. And we, I ran that for eight years. Um, what made me switch to doing what I do right now, working online educationally with clients and provider certification uh, is to me really blowing through a glass ceiling of an, of some limiting beliefs um, around this is the way it has to be. And this is the best and only way. I think that's a big problem with how we train physicians, but it's also with entrepreneurship. I think a lot of times we look at, well, every doctor who is going to do work or make it is going to be direct one-to-one -one patient care. And we got to try to work with insurance this, we got to deal with billings, embezzlement, all, da, 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 whatever it is, this is the way it is. And it has to be, but the thing was the way it is and it has to be was killing me medically. <clears throat> 
And honestly, financially was really challenging trying to do out of the box type medicine in an, with in, in systems and in insurance with dealing with insurance companies and adjusters that don't know what the hell they're talking about, what you're doing. Right. <clears throat> I think it's great to be a maverick. Right. But it's also extremely courageous and dangerous. Um, so trying to work within that system, doing something outside box didn't work. And it brought me to my lowest point. You know, I, I got to the point where patients weren't happy because this had to be covered by insurance. So that didn't have to be covered by insurance. <clears throat> the other aspect of this was one-on-one -on -one medicine in a clinic doesn't lend itself to education. Totally. And, and for me, I was like, if you actually teach someone the why and the how, they can get results for life. Like, how are we building skills and drills in the delivery of medicine? Like, I'm a teacher and I mean it. But we're not doing that in the way that we deliver care in factory medicine whatsoever and in a compensation model that also didn't reinforce that. So I literally had to make a jump and say, you know what? I love to teach and I love to learn. I am going to teach this to people. I'm going to have a format. You cannot do that in a clinic. So we're going to go online. And I, it was literally a test to be like, can I engage some patients and clients in conversations that says you have this really hard problem and you're going to require a lot of education and hands-on together with me in a different type of relationship. You know, like it's a mentor, mentee, student, teacher relationship. So you learn how, how to do this. and. Not surprising at the time to me, not surprising now, many people said, hell yes. So many people said, hell yes. In fact, that my first month delivering this type of model online, um, we had, I think, 12 to 15 clients. Um, and pretty much within six months of doing that, I recognized something, which was most people were like, you're crazy. Like, think about this pre-pandemic 10 years ago. You have a medical doctor in a clinic, successful functional medicine clinic, who says, I'm going to go do something online, you know, and teach people how to do this from anywhere around the world. They're like, you're crazy. And, but the thing was, people got better faster. The results were bigger. And their, their self-confidence and certainty went through the roof in this process, which is something that's never been a promise for conventional medicine. So I was like, there's something here. And then they told all their friends. And within six months, it was so popular. And people referred so many people into this program. I shut down my physical clinic. It just, when you know better, my Angelou says, when you know better, you do better. I knew better. I saw better. I experienced better. And hundreds of other people did as well. And I was like, I'm done with clinical medicine because I'm going to take the skills, the best of that, and apply it to an online model, working in small groups with people in an educational way. And man, it was lightning in a bottle. Yeah. And you could help in that situation. You can also help more people and yes. it doesn't have to be restricted to a geographic area. Well, I also tell people, like we talked to somebody yesterday, you know, um, uh, Maduri, and she, she, they were saying, well, um, when, like, is it, it, when do we get the one-on-one -on -one to do this and all that stuff? And I said, let me ask you a question. If I'm in this room and then there's somebody over there that's asking me some questions and all this stuff, I'm going to run the corner. I'm going to be whispering with them. To, and then I'm, and then I'm going to come back and <laughs> I'm going around the top. Like, I'm going to ask you, like, do you, do we not understand that 90% of what we learn is not from what the questions we ask? Okay. 90% of what we learn is from listening to the questions and answers that we didn't ask that other people are asking. Right. So like, it's just, it's a concept around um, group learning and mentorship and teaching from one to many that people don't realize is that like, I can sit here and I, everybody is a perfect case study or an example of some concept that without you having experienced that you would have never had the opportunity in your life to witness. And now you just saw it and you're like, I'm never going to forget it because it's that person's story is that person's data is that person's pattern. And you just had an opportunity of a lifetime. Talk about the testing for a second. Cause I know you've talked before on, mm -hmm. You know, even from the hormone standpoint, there's certain tests that you recommend 
that aren't ordered mm-hmm. because if you do, if a practitioner does order them, they'll get flagged by insurance that they're ordering too many. So talk about how the testing works alongside the program as well. Well, you know, this is kind of sad because it's it's a good example, but you know, I, I am an expert in long haul in POTS and dysautonomia. And my patients who have recovered from long haul are going to their long haul clinics around the country and sharing like their outcomes. And I've had like the, you know, the head physician, the medical directors of these clinic and programs and some of the names you would know, um, reach out to me and say, what is it about what, why do you get such out of the crazy results with this client Heidi that we've never seen anywhere else? What's so special? What's so different? One of the things I bring up first is I say actually hormones and but here's where the limitation is, because when I started to go into how long haul, for example, has a major impact on multiple hormonal systems. First of all, they don't know this because they don't test hormones. They're not having any training on hormones. Right. But then it gets into the practicality of it. And it's like, well, how do you order these hormones? Right. Because in your med- med- regular conventional medical doctor world, the only access they have to is blood tests for hormones. Blood test is not the best way to test your hormones. Okay, so just given an example, saliva hormone testing, way better. Urine hormone testing could be better in some instances. So there are many other ways, right? And the problem is if your insurance won't cover the saliva hormone testing, right, then you don't get it. And that was one of the things is like, well, insurance isn't going to order the hormone testing. I go, well, okay, even if you overcome that barrier, okay, it's a couple hundred bucks. Your patients who are sick enough will be willing to pay for that, right? So, and True, but they don't even think of that. They're like, well, if the insurance isn't going to cover it, I'm not going to be able to order it, right? And for me, it's like, these people are dying. Like, these people can't drive, can't work. I mean, like, so like, what's a, you know, $300 and under test for hormones is, right? So for me, like the limitation of doctors and patients and thinking, I can only get tests that my insurance will cover. Your life depends on this. So wouldn't you like spend a couple hundred dollars to get the best test? So number one, the best kind of testing isn't always covered by your insurance or even available to the doctors that you're seeing, even if they are the world expert in your condition, quote unquote. They're the world expert on what is medically covered for that condition in the constraints of that, which is a really narrow scope. I want you guys to know because the way I approach COVID, there's like so many pieces. It's like a star. It's literally like a David star um, approach. And that's why we get these results. So I think that there's a lot of limitations and even just testing, right? Uh, They don't know what's available. Number two, there's no training and incentive for physicians to learn how to understand these test results of out of the box, right? That are really the best tests. And this goes into, I think, Jeremy, you were talking about how as physicians working, all 90, 99% of physicians are employed by medical groups or insurance companies or hospitals. We are evaluated from a performance level, from a KPI level, key performance indicator level of how much is it per cost per client that we're seeing per month? Like we, we literally get a report card. I know because I'm a medical, I was a medical director for several years, right? I had, I was responsible for taking these reports and, and going through it with our young physicians and saying, Hey, Hey, Dr. Grace, you know, your average cost of radiological studies was $333 per patient. And Dr. Jane over there is at $230 a month. What's wrong? I mean, think about that. So imagine, let's say you're a good hearted physician and you're interested in hormones and you're like, oh my God, COVID, I'm going to go ahead and order some hormones. Um, Okay, that handle costs 600 bucks. Now your average cost per month per that page, per patients. Now you order just once a day. Your average cost of labs per patient just went from $230 a month to $473 a month. You're going to get a talking to right? So then what we don't realize is physicians are literally, you know, like, you know, like literally um, we're, we're assemblers in a manufacturing plant. We're being counted how many patients we see, how much each thing costs or doesn't cost, how much damage, how many of them are damaged and this and that. Like we are nothing but factory workers. I would say waitresses literally um, working in the conventional medical system. So you can already see that 
we can't even perform even with the best of intentions in your best interest because of the way that we're being evaluated on cost containment. Pretty crazy. Um, talk about the evolution of your programs, which, because I know you have the transform, I know you have different master classes like the hormone, the food mapping, the thyroid, mm -hmm. which one came first? What was the kind of yeah. evolution of you creating these programs? The evolution is I'm super ambitious and I wanted to tackle big problems with big solutions. So when I started, um, the main program, it was an autoimmune program. It was transform autoimmune disease naturally. That was the promise and that was the program because that was the hardest, biggest ass problem that I could tackle at the time. I was like, let's pick the hardest because <laughs> I know this works for that. And I, having autoimmune disease myself, collected a lot of autoimmune patients, 12,000 patients in the clinic, right? So we had the biggest autoimmune population in a clinic that we served. So it was a natural, natural thing for me to build a program to address those different root causes around autoimmune disease. What I found though later on was, oh my God, this worked for people with long haul. This worked for people with mast cell, for POTS, for you know, Parkinson's, for you know, every single like major chronic disease that you can put a giant question mark on, hot diggity damn, it works. And so we expanded the program to say, you know, this is the transform program for chronic disease. So that was the evolution of that. And we, we started to work with tons of autism spectrum families and all that, just like we did in the clinic. And then what happened was when you have a big program and you have a big promise, there's a lot of people that will say, I'm not sick enough for that. Or, oh my God, I really want the hormone piece, Dr. Maggie. Like, I think it's just hormones. I'm going through menopause. Help me. Because I mean, in the real clinic, that's what happened. A lot of people came to us to deal with male hormone issues, female hormone issues. And they're like, I just want a piece of that pie. <laughs> so the next, uh, so I decided, well, why not just offer a standalone hormone program? And we did, we, we took the hormone piece of this main program and we put it into a separate hormone program. And we started to work with individuals on hormones, huge success. And so I remember the first group that went through like six years ago, and now we're continuously enrolling, working with people with hormones. And what we found though, interestingly, when we started working with people in the hormone program, people started Remember I connected thyroid and autoimmune disease and hormones. Um, people started to make connections and I have to teach. Well, if you got this hormone pattern that I see that they don't see, this is related to autoimmune disease. Whether you know it or not, then they realize, oh my gosh, there's other pieces that I'm missing. Or, and when I go through hormones, Jeremy, people don't realize that digestion has a lot to do with the breakdown of your hormones. And so necessarily the conversation became, hey, there might be a major, di there is a major digestion problem here. Here's some work that needs to be done around that. And then they're like, but I have all these food issues. Why do I react to this? Why do I react to that? So the second program that came after that was our food mapping program. The most requested standalone program was the food mapping where people said, I want my food trauma done and I want it done. And I want it done one and done in the shortest period of time possible, right? This, um, and, and the answer is not just, here's the test, like some of the mail order tests you're thinking about. The answer was, I got to teach you a master's level course in digestion because 50% of your food trauma is not even food allergy related, it's digestion related. Dang it. And so as a result of that, I, I took the food map, I created the food mapping system where we educate individuals around all the aspects of digestion, how to, die, how to figure that out, how to troubleshoot it, how to fix it. And then we do testing and that's data driven, of course, isn't, isn't covered by your insurance. Um, that is the exact test that you need. That's accurate. And then we provide the Rosetta Stone of how to understand those results, because some people have false positives and negatives. And we go, this is exactly what you should be doing and not doing based on these results with the Rosetta Stone that we're teaching you how to do this. And then here's everything you need to do to fix this problem. We launched this program January of this year. This has been um, eight months and we've had about 400 individuals go through that program already. So this is by far right now, our most popular and viral program is the food mapping program because everybody can identify that food matters and many people have food trauma and we have to eat. So rather than being traumatized multiple times every single day, food can become medicine, healing, nourishing, and loving. 
So that's what we do in this program. That was the evolution from hormones. We added this. And then um, a couple, about a couple months ago, we, we, add, we added our thyroid standalone program because some people thought, wow, I really need, um, I, I need you. And thyroid, a lot of people start thinking about prescriptions. You know, a lot of people, one of the obstacle is, you know, not only do I not know how to deal with autoimmune disease in the thyroid, my doctor doesn't even know, doesn't even think it's autoimmune. And I can't get convinced my doctors to prescribe. There's certain angles in this where it's like, it requires some skills on your part to teach you how to find doctors who would collaborate find doctors who you can have conversations with. And then sometimes you need, you just need a damn prescription. So in this particular program, we take care of all of that, including a prescription if necessary, because a lot of times people just need to help figuring out how do I calm the thyroid? How do I get on the right dose of medication? And it's much easier than to ask a doctor say, can you just refill this prescription that's worked for me? So that's the promise of this. And we just started this in March of this year. And I, we just had um, the most amazing meeting yesterday with a group at, on their thyroid. And Vivian in there said to me, oh my God, I had no idea that learning about my health and working with doctors can be this much fun. <laughs> and I was like, hot diggity damn, it is. So Jeremy, that's how the thyroid program came about. Thanks for sharing the journey. I want to talk about the food mapping for a second and what Please. are some of the common symptoms people are experiencing sure. I, I mean is it something i don't know if people are experiencing oh i have this allergy to dairy or whatever it is or is it more even know. Bro broader uh symptoms that they're experiencing the thing is is that most people just think food trauma and immediately they think about things like heartburn bloating pain food sitting in, in, in their stomach, small intestine, not moving, diarrhea, constipation, right? Some people even have blood, blood in their stool, hemorrhoids. Like there's a lot of different types of gut related symptoms. But to me, that's like, you know, the top of the iceberg. Um, other food trauma, food related symptoms that people don't realize is more downstream. So there are people now really big on the scene, people hear the word mast cell activation syndrome, histamine intolerance, where they're just finding that the overall allergy exposure, any minute exposure they're reacting to. So it may not even be, just be food or they don't even know it's food, but they have asthma, they have eczema, they have hives, and it's just coming. And it seems to be random all over the place. And they think it's environmental or they think it's totally random. And gosh darn it, 80% of the problem is their digestion and their food. So there's a lot of hidden type things. And then people with autoimmune issues, they just know, wow, when I eat certain foods, I hurt, but then the allergist says that nothing's wrong and food is not related. And so they know that food matters in some of their pain or autoimmune disorders, but they're being poo-pooed and they just don't even know how food matters, but they know it's connected. So there's a wide variety of food-related trauma uh, that aren't just related with the gut. And I haven't gone into like brain ADD symptoms, kids in the autism spectrum. Food is a major lever in those symptoms and in their neurological development. Yeah, it's really interesting because I started to break out at one point, like on my forehead and my cheeks and everything. And so I went to the dermatologist and I started to list off, well, here's some of the stuff I tried to cut out of my diet and here's what, and they're like, here's a prescription. See you later. <laughs> and I was like, wait, I didn't have a chance to like tell you. And I wasn't a convert. It wasn't a holistic conversation. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, it's gotta be something right. That I'm doing. Uh, Cause it just came out of the blue. Based on what you yeah. already told me, I already know uh, 10 pieces of information in my head. And this is, these are the hidden patterns that I see. Right. So immediately I already know. There's a, there's several steps in your digestion. I already know are broken. I can already tell based on that symptom alone, the story you're telling me. Right. And number two, it, it has been going on for a long time, but it's just shown up in other ways that I'd be like, I could probably pin where there's been times in your life where you're like, Oh, there's some digestion issue or some gut related symptoms. And, and you just had no idea that it was even related later on to, I got this thing going on or this rash or this hives. So I'm already, I'm, I would be already going down a completely very different way. I'd be like, what's going on with digestion? What's going on with the food allergies associated with it? And then the third piece is why now, and that's going to tell me hormonal issue going on as a 
lever, lever switch, the time of when these things happen, give me so much insight in the fact that there's a hormonal connection here. Some hormones are probably changing rapidly in you at that period of time and why. Talk about Dana for a second, because she kind of fits into this category. Dana is a, when I met her was a 22 year old uh, marketing um, in marketing for nonprofit. And she had literally symptoms all over the place. She was weighing and I, she has posted her pictures and she, I've interviewed her multiple times. She was down to, I believe, 96 pounds. She had cystic acne all over her face, rashes all the time, reacting to all food. She doesn't know what, cause it was everything and seemingly random. And she was on all these different elimination diets because the Google, Dr. Google told her to do that. And some of the holistic doctors told her to do that. So 96 pounds and told to go on an elimination diet to eliminate probably 80% of the food that she was eating. Right. And then in the meantime, she was no longer able to drive. She was dizzy. She had vertigo. Right. And so no diagnosis either for all of that, because she was just cooking for Cocoa Puffs. Right. So recommended to an antidepressant maybe this is ADD who the heck, like what what's the brain fog so when i met her at 22 like she as a vibrant young lady was losing not only like all these physical symptoms but she was losing her self confidence and self trust where was the dana spunk right and not supported by her own family in their belief of her their belief and trust of her or their willingness to invest in her outcomes right So she took it upon herself to join our program. And Dana is also the same person where um, very early in the program um, within, because our main program is two months, two months, that's it. Like this is a master's degree. And within the first two weeks, uh, she figured out with us that there was a digestive issue, no stomach acid. And she started supporting her digestion, right? And it's really interesting because that's not even talking about food allergies, hormones, or even other nutrient deficiencies later. When I talk to Dana at week 10, I always ask people at week 10, I always say, hey, what was your biggest outcome so far? Right? And she like lit up like Chris, like, like light bulb. She goes, oh my God, oh my gosh. And I went, what? And she's like, I forgot that I haven't had pot symptoms like since week two. This is why she couldn't drive. This is why she was dizzy. This is why she was almost at the point of almost ready to use, you know, a cane or assistive walking device or going upstairs in her own home, right? So for me, like even something as unsolvable like that, where she had been struggling for years with it and it turned into almost like a terminal problem by week 10, number one, first step was digestion. And that's why it's the first, the first medical chapter of my book is called digestion, the first domino. And that's why for me, like order matters. And for me, really critically important is we got to address, educate you and address digestion first. And it shows you, her case really shows you why mastery of one thing is really important at a time. And, and, And number two is the order of operations matter. By the second week of the program, she, all her POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia symptoms were gone, not less, gone. And this is completely unheard of by all her cardiologists, all her dermatologists, all her endocrinologists. They've never seen this outcome before. And for me, I was like, yeah, we get this at least twice a week on two different clients. And that's what she even forgot. She's like, I, I forgot. I just, yeah, I, I forgot because it's, this is what we see every single week. I want to talk about uh, Farouk for a second, family. Yeah. I do want to share something really quickly, which is if you go to, you know, eight out of the box dot com, which mm-hmm. we're looking at right now, mm-hmm. um, you can get Dr. Maggie's book. Yeah. Um, and shockingly, when I was looking at it today, it's a dollar. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> um, I want to get this out there. And obviously, there's a bunch of bonuses with that um, that you can see here from hormone course to other things. Um, so you can check out. I'll even, eight. Go ahead. I'll even do you better. No, you this have is a too good. Yeah, I'll even do you better. Um, what I'm going to say is this, is that we're going to, for the show notes, we're going to put in a different link for you guys so that every listener of this can get my book for free. I, I still think that? people should 99 cents. They, they have to have some buy-in um, in my opinion. <laughs> 
Um, but that's very generous of you. I think eight out of the box.com mm -hmm. and then you get all these bonuses with it and, yeah. and just learn directly. What I find, Dr. Maggie, with the books, like people pour their mm -hmm. 30 years plus of education into yeah. this format that I can consume at a fraction of the price. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just huge value. So I'm always buying books um, as well. So, well, you know, my favorite part of the book is this, is that uh, I'm a too long, don't read person. <laughs> TLDR. Um, I like to say, what is it I need to do? So I, I my promise to you is this at um, each of these eight lessons in the back of each chapter is action steps. If you don't even read the book and you just go to the action steps, the back of each of the chapters, you can get all the benefits already. Right. So just what I said here about digestion, if that intrigued you, um, the first medical chapter is called Digestion, the First Domino. And the first chapter of the book is why it's important to actually lead with curiosity. So if you're not curious right now, I don't know what's going to get you curious. <laughs> and so I think leading with curiosity is one of the biggest lessons I learned as a physician, as someone with chronic health symptoms, and as a teacher, right? So I want curious students come at me. Um, and so that's why chapter number one is leading with curiosity. Love it. Check it out. Um, Farouk and family. Yeah. I love Farouk's story because Farouk came to me and they live in Iowa. And so there was a lack of local physicians that really were dealing with some of the symptoms his family was dealing with. And that he has a young son who was, who's on the spectrum and who is four years old and nonverbal or very poorly verbal. But the main complaint was just constipation, right? You think it's not a big ass, right? Um, and for me, um, when we talked to Farouk, I actually spoke to him. Uh, I love parents who lead with curiosity. And he is, for me, the best leader for a family that you can get between him and his wife, Sarah, um, because they're curious. They wanted to learn. And they knew that locally, they said functional medicine doctors, naturopaths in there was a joke, quote unquote. And so one of the limiting beliefs a lot of people have is I have to find a doctor around me. And besides, I have to have one covered by insurance. Another one was I have to find someone around me. And so he got out of the box. He did um, he did research and found, you know, YouTube channel, found other providers in the area who referred him to me. Uh, and so his um, constipation. And so looking at constipation in a child, if that was the only promise, and I was like, you're just low, your bar is too low, dude. And I said that. Uh, I said, yes, he's constipated. He's also a child with autism spectrum. And I know with all the patterns that we deal with is kids on the spectrum come from families with autoimmune issue. There's a link genetically between one or multiple parents or their family line having autoimmune genetics and kids with autism spectrum. So it was really critical to, for him to understand that there's autoimmune basis to this, that this was way more than constipation and that I was going to solve bigger problems with him and him with his family. And uh, with his child, we really, yes, digestion came first, right? However, there were definitely food sensitivities here. And the genetic basis for this was incredible because we ended up working with the entire family. So it was such a good case study for everybody who was in the program to be able to look at, here is dad's result, here is son's result, here is daughter's result, here's mom's result, for us to actually teach them how not only was our testing accurate, it was genetically accurate. Like it told us information about genetics. And so we ended up helping the entire family. Yes, constipation was gone. That was the easy shit, <laughs> right? Um, but what ended up happening was within the next two months, the verbal of this child went from very poorly to nonverbal to within a matter of a couple months, being able to speak with two and three word sentences right? This is unheard of. We really have out there nothing for autism spectrum, like the kind of, um, you know, speech therapy, OT, some of this, yes, right? There's some, but at the same time, nothing that actually has these kinds of results. And the reason is we're not dealing with the root cause of the problem. So when I look at Vera, their child, the, the and I think about that, there were connections there with his adrenal hormones. Like who's going to look at a kid's adrenal hormones? 
right? Um, there were connections with his family history and autoimmunity. There were connections with food allergies for sure. There were certain food sensitivities. And it's not what you think. Like a lot of times you guys think like, you, people think, oh, it's going to be these 6,000 things. Well, has it ever occurred to you guys, um, Leah from Italy, she became a carnivorian because of all her GI issues. But in the end, guess what? The one thing she had to move from her diet was based on our testing. She had a big ass digestion problem and she was allergic to beef. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> right. And in Dara's case, same thing. Like we make certain assumptions. Oh, on the autism spectrum, when we Google it. It's going to be this, 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 and this. And we're dealing with kids who have a lot of like food aversions, right? Preferences or texture issues. So parents really need accurate data. Par parents need digestive help that the kids can tolerate. That's age appropriate, right? And so it was really cool working with this family. So constipation has gone, increasing verbal like at this lightning speed and the rest of the family is getting better and better. Boom, there you go. Dr. Maggie, I have one last question. First of all, thanks for sharing your lessons, your journey, your knowledge. I want to encourage people to check out drmaggieu.com. They could also check out eight out of the box.com. I bought it on Audible, but you can also get it on that site. Um it just came as out well. on Audible. Yeah, I well, I bought it. So I didn't realize it just came out. Um my last question is resources. Some of your yeah. favorite resources. It could be books, experts whatever you deem as some of your favorites. Yeah, Gabor Mate. I really, uh, I would say one of my biggest whispers to me is Dr. Gabor Mate. Uh, really, you know, thinking about how, you know, trauma, you know, plays a role. Um, patterns of thought and thinking um, really plays a role in disease. So for me, we didn't get a chance to talk about it, but a huge part of our program is what I call from mindset to mind growth. So that whole neuroplasticity of the brain and the sick patterns that it gets in because of trauma responses is a really big deal. And so there's a chapter in my book about mindset to mind growth, but Dr. Gabor Mate and his work really speaks to how example diseases that we now know are more and more autoimmune like ALS. Um, there literally is an underlying thought pattern and behavioral pattern that it, your body gets into that actually is a cause of disease. And I saw that in my own mother with ALS. So really, I think a shout out Terrible. to him. And uh, it carries a very big personal note for me. Any other experts or resources? You know, I think about from an entrepreneur, from entrepreneur standpoint and life coaching standpoint, and I love Mel Robbins. I really do. Um, I listen to her podcast all the time. And just the other day, I listened to one where she says she has something called let them. And I love that where, you know, we, we have people who do things that irritate you or put obstacles in your way. And sometimes you just got to say, let them. <laughs> right. Um, for example, like there are people who might say that functional medicine or holistic medicine is buffoonery. It's is levitation. And if that's what they think, that's okay. Let them. That's not who I work with. That's not who's going to listen to the end of this podcast like you are right now. Um, so uh, I, I think that there's a lot of good life advice that really applies to our health. Um, I love Mel's podcast. She had Dr. Tima Bryant on her uh, podcast also recently. And Dr. Tima has a new book. It's, uh, it's called Homecoming, I believe. But um, Dr. Tima um, Bryant has some great life advice. And recently, um, I had someone texted me a quote from Dr. Tima, and it was something about how uh, what other people's stories have about you is about them. Like, go live your own life, right? It's, it, it's really people's stories about you is about them. And that was really great. It's helped me have a certain healthy sense of detachment so that I'm able to teach without attachment. I'm not attached right now to any, to you or your audience member having to believe me or having to do what I say. I'm not attached to the reader having a specific set of, you know, outcomes. I'm more like, here's the opportunity. Here's the invitation. I'm here. And then just go ahead and spread the word out. And then the right people will be drawn to you. Right. So, you know, between let them 
and what other people's stories have about you is about them, that's really great because now I'm only responsible for me. Love it. Dr. Maggie, I want to be the first one to thank you. Thank you for sharing. This has been fantastic. Everyone check out drmaggieu.com and we'll see everyone next time. Dr. Maggie, thanks so much. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. 